Hiya, my name is Stacy Townsend, and you are at the Pickler the Podcast uh, podcast. I have my co-host, John the People's Champ Davison over there with the finger guns. And, you know, uh, we have a great guest tonight. But uh, first things first, John Davison, um, it was your 30th birthday yesterday. How do you feel? I feel pretty darn good to be in my 30s and not my 20s, ready to uh, elevate and be a big boy uh, for my 30th birthday. (laughs) All right, we got to stop that now. I can't. I can't be. uh, I I can't be being you now. So (laughs) we have a fun guest, Stacy. He is a top five singles player in the world, according to I guess Duper and every other rating system. Uh, Electrum sponsored player, a former. Paddle tennis. I hope I, I I said that right. Star and now pickleball star, and he is uh, he brings a lot of energy to the court. So hopefully we'll, he'll bring a lot of energy tonight to us. So first things first, we will welcome Gabriel Joseph. Woo. Welcome, Gabe. Some round of applause here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you too much credit early on. You know, you haven't showed your. Uh, your comedic value so far tonight. So, you know, if you're funny throughout the night, I'll give you one at the end. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I think I'm pretty funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's up, guys? How are you? We're good. We're good. You know, we're, uh, this is the latest podcast star we did. You know, we had to uh, get it right for you. You're over there on the Pacific Coast. That's right. So. Good. I'm in the middle of Los Angeles. So, I'm, I'm sorry for you guys, but uh, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> so, no, you we'll just got stay off. up to talk to you, Gabe. Okay. <laughs> yeah so so you just got off the tennis court is that what you're doing just got off the tennis court it was a grueling you know kind of normal day but probably like seven eight hour day um and that's why i was like yo can i just shower real quick because man you know when you're on the court all day and you're sweating and out here you know the weather's so beautiful so it's like mm-hmm. it's april and we're like mid 70s you know sun's out so it feels a little hotter but you know when you're sweating all day and all sticky you got the sunscreen on like First, like the first thing, I'm like a hygiene freak, as you probably know. So it's like <laughs> first thing I want to do, I just want to hop in the shower, get all the you know the sweat and grease out, and, and just chill. It's like one of my it's one of my guilty pleasures, I would say. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, you you took a shower, you know, you got the hair all gelled up, you got the chains. I don't even know Four. how many chains oh. you have there. <laughs> got five. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Always counting? Rock the ice, you gotta rock the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? Do you, do you play with all those? I do. You know, it's so funny. And then Lauren McLaughlin one time, I think this was at La Habra. She's uh, like, she comes up behind me, like I'm sitting on a stool and she like taps me on the shoulder and she's like, yo, like, is all that ice, all that drip, is it real? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, man, maybe you didn't wear so much. You'd be even a little quicker on the court. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes it holds me back. But, <laughs> savage. but you know, you have to look good. Hey, when you look good, you feel good, you know? So yeah, definitely. Um, so you, you have a day job, a tennis pro. But you're also a podcast host in your own right with Satan yeah. Third. Yeah. So we, uh, man, I mean, well, yeah. So Tennis Pro, and it's funny, like, I'd always been teaching here and there, you know, probably since I was like a senior in high school. Um, and I've always been in like the tennis realm. So one of my first jobs, this is funny. I don't know if you guys have this back back in Florida, but um, do you remember Sports Chalet? No. No. Okay. It was like a sports store, like kind of like a sports authority, like a mm-hmm. Dick's, Dick's, whatever, mm-hmm. you know. And um, so that was my very first job as a kid. I was a tennis stringer. Then I started working at a tennis shop. And then, um, you know, just word of mouth recommendations. I started getting clients. So I was kind of always, you know, just dibbling, dabbling. And then um, during COVID 2020, I was, um, you know, we were on lockdown here and it was super strict. My, um, my boss now, Steve, he has the tennis academy in Calabasas that I used to go to as a kid, actually. I used to train at. And we were doing like a boys' night, um, Tuesday night clinic just for fun um, at a private house, you know, because like I said, during COVID, everything was shut down. And he just comes up to me one day and he's like, dude, you know, what are you doing for summer? Like, come work for me for summer camp. And I was just in the process of graduating school. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing much, you know, like um, I don't have anything set in stone. So I was like, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll, uh, this was like middle May. I'm like, yeah, I'll come check it out. So I started working summer camp and, you know, the hours are great. And then, um, you know, slowly got some clients and then I started off kind of part time. And then um, over, I would say probably last year, probably like April, I started working like full, full time, putting in like 
43, 45 hours a week. And um, it's been great. But, you know, the, the little twist, though, it's like uh, I'm like the pickle guy out here in L.A. So I'm actually doing half pickle, half tennis. So it's super awesome. And that's the one beauty about this sport, man. It's so inclusive. So um, you might give me a hard time for this. But, like, I got all the housewives, man. And they just they love to play. And <laughs> They keep coming back and they're really just a joy, man, because they did they just want to go out there and have a good time and they love me to them. I'm like a little local like celebrity star to them, you know, so it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so 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 who's the real coach of the stars? Is it you or is it McNasty? Uh, McNasty's more tapped in with the celebs, I would say. I'm just like the, the local, I guess, touring pro. I'm like that guy. Yeah. You know? You're yeah, for the like, people. You know what I mean? But Jesse's more like um, so I live in the valley. I'm in I live in Tarzana, but the club I teach at is in Calabasas. And then if you guys have been to L.A., Jesse's like in Santa Monica. So like, you know, you got to take the 405. So you got to go over the hill. Mm -hmm. um, so she's more on the west side. But um, I would be like the guy for like the whole valley. So <laughs> so you, you're, you're just a man of L.A. right now. A, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take that crown, you know, so. Um, it's been good, man. Pickle's been treating me good. I can't can't really complain too much. So um, I've been blessed, you know. How how did you fall into the sport, Gabe? Oh man, you want me to make a a short story long? <laughs> <laughs> um, so all right, so how I actually first got into it. This is uh, I'm always good with dates and numbers. So this was December of 2016, and um, I've told this story many times. So my buddy Mike, he's a family friend. He um, it's crazy. He was. I guess like a member at the at the time was the sports academy. Obviously, Kobe had bought it, made it the Mamba Academy. And he's like, yo, man, come out to Thousand Oaks, um, play this game called Pickleball. And I'd heard of it, never played before. I'm like, you know, I just I was like, probably everyone's kind of first reaction. I'm like, what's this little winky dink game? It's mm -hmm. for old people. Like, it just sounds whack, right? Mm -hmm. So I come out and we play terrible first impression, man. We're playing in indoors in the gym, <laughs> temp net tape lines on a basketball court oh boy and he gives me like a little flimsy paddle and we play i'm playing with you know three you know old dudes you know in their 60s and uh but you know what? So i kind of liked it i was like all right like this this is cute honestly i'm like this is an adorable <laughs> little and um i end up going to columbia because we would always go to columbia for christmas every year so i end up going to columbia and he hits me up while i'm there he's like hey dude let's play a tournament together and I was like, the inside of me, I'm like, dude, like, fuck no, I don't want to play. Like, <laughs> no, I don't even want to be associated. But he's a family friend, so I honestly just, I did it to him as a favor. Mm. And I got so lucky. So the tournament was like in January. And by the like grace of God, it rained. So we got rained out, postponed. And then I think like two months go by, we end up playing. And we play like four O's or three fives. I don't even remember. You could probably look it up in, in pickleball tournaments. And um, at that time, I had actually just met Julio, Jesse, Scott Crandall, and the whole group. Mm. So and we were playing a lot of tennis at the time. So we were playing tennis live ball. So anyway, so um, we end up playing the tournament. And this is on a Saturday morning, like at 8 a.m. I'm like, this is brutal. And um, <laughs> we lose the uh, first round. Like, I, I don't remember, like 13, 15, like 11, 13, super close, right? And then I didn't know there was back draw, like double play. So he's like, dude, we got to play double play. And like I said, man, the man above was looking looking out for me. And um, I was supposed to go play live ball with Julio, Jesse, and the gang. So I kind of told them. I, I made up some excuse. I'm like, dude, like, nah, I can't play. Like, I got to be somewhere. I got to teach or some shit. And um, it kind of sucked. So his dog was sick. So mm -hmm. he was like, no problem, dude. I got to go take care of my dog. So he goes back. And I think his dog was, like, deathly ill. So he actually called me that day. And he's like, dude, thank God we didn't play backdrop because uh, I think his dog ended up passing away. But um, anyway, so then I didn't touch another paddle, right? I know it's a sad ending. <laughs> um, I didn't touch another paddle till November of 2018. And um, like I said, long story short, um, one of our tennis buddies, this guy Eric Lee, was good friends with Christine McGrath. They were family friends. They grew up in the, like, in the valley out here. And um, he was telling Jesse, because at the time we were playing a lot of paddle tennis, and he's like, dude, forget paddle, man. Like my uh, my friend Christine, she makes like some decent money playing pickle. Like you guys got to play. So we end up going to Memorial Park. And you know, I'm sure you've seen like on Julio's Instagram, like mm -hmm. he's he's like part of like the city, whatever, kind of running it there. And um, we end up playing and it was cool, you know, like played like some decent rec ball, probably like 4-0, 4-5 level. And I'm like, this is cool. 
And um, we end up actually going on a little group vacation. Me, Jesse, Scott, and a few other people, we go to Barbados. So me and Scott Crandall, like, we, we started playing together doubles. And we kind of look at each other. We're like, bro, we should, like, take this serious. Like, let's play when we get mm-hmm. back for the new year. So um, we get back from the trip. I go to Columbia, come back. This is, like, January of 2019. And then we start playing. So, like, we get plugged up with, like, Ryan Treffery, Brandon Kramer, you know, just kind of like local local guys that are, are pretty good, you know. And uh, we start playing, and then we just start playing some four or five tournaments. And, um, you know me, I wanted to jump the gun. I was like, bro, let's play pro. <laughs> was like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good tennis player. Like, I'm not going to toot my horn and be like, I'm just like yeah. feet. But I'm like, dude, I'm good. I'm athletic. I can pick this thing up. Like, no problem. But he's like, Scotty gave me a piece of humble pie. He's like, no, dude, we need to start at four or five, win a few tournaments, and then, you know, we can go from there. But um, I think I really caught the itch, man, because um, I just remember Jesse telling me, like, when we first started playing, like, I hated dinking. Like, I'm like, oh, this is so boring. Like, I didn't like it. You know, I'm a tennis but I want to hit the ball. I want to grind. I want to move, you know. And I play a lot of paddle. So I'm like, what's this winky dink little finesse, you know, soft hands? Like, I like to close the net in tennis. So I got to stay behind this line and hit, like, a swing volley. Like, this is so whack. Like, so we ended up playing. And then um, I think I played my first singles tournament at Memorial I think I played like four or five. And then I think my first real like pro pro tournament was at the Bobby Riggs in twenty summer of 2019. And um, Ben Tyson, they were all there and were supposed to play. But I think they had like some like double mixed event where it's like you played like mixed pro mm-hmm. and then like an aged mix or something, which landed on the same day as singles. So they were all there but didn't play singles. So I ended up beating um, Dan Roditi in that okay. match. And- that's when I caught the itch. I'm like, dude, like Scott told me. And, and thing about Scott, Scotty, which I love, he's like, I call him like my uncle. He just like kept it real with me on the way home because that was in Ocean or where's Bobby Riggs, Encinitas. And it was like a two hour drive back home. And he's like, we all carpooled. And he's like, dude, you could be good at singles. Like you got the talent, the, the strokes. And coming from Scotty, that meant a lot. So mm. I was like, all right, shit, like maybe I'll do something with this. <laughs> and then, um, I think I played after that, what was it, the uh, December tournament at La Habra against Dan again, and, and Rafa Hewitt was just coming up. He played. And then I think fast forward, then I played my first PPA February 2020, which was Mesa. And um, yeah. like I said, short story long, I hope that answered your, your question. <laughs> I, I, I think you answered a lot of questions. Um, I have one for you. Do you still think you're a 4-5 or five doubles player? <laughs> uh, oh, no. You know what? You know what? Funny man, actually, that's a good ass question. Like, and and I know you're gonna ask me this later. Like, why don't play more dubs? I, I think I'm a good doubles player. Do I think like, am I gonna medal? Definitely not. Like, we're just being real. Um, I think if I had the right partner, not necessarily like a phenom or just someone I gelled with and we both just, you know, got along really well with. Um, I think I'd be a good doubles player. Um, definitely not four or five. <laughs> I'm well, average, but a little better than four or five. Well, so you know. I, I, mean, I would say like low, low, low to mid pro if we're just, you know, keeping it a stack, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying when the last time I played 5-0, I was waiting for you to win your match in 5-0 <laughs> mixed. And Five-0. I was like, all right, all right, all right, we're going to play. And then you, you you didn't even make it out like one round. So no. I was just checking in on your doubles game. <laughs> well, mixed is a different <laughs> game. I think AJ Kohler says it. I hope he doesn't kill me for this. Uh, mixed is single <laughs> a helper. So that's a different <laughs> <laughs> it, mix, it, it mix, really does and, get like that sorry is that again i would say it really does get like that sometimes it, it can and uh it is now what with, it is now with me and john though i just have to say that i put put john on the right side every once in a while that happened once <laughs> you, you put john in his place <laughs> that happened once because i got uh i don't know uh did you go to nat have you been to nationals no and, it's oh. funny well, the answer is no, but I was, the answer, I was supposed to play, and we can actually, this will translate to later, dude. I work, and I just get caught up with life, so I missed the registration date by, mm. like, three days, and I messaged the lady to let me in, and, and she was like, no, basically, and she's like, too bad, so sad, so yeah. that was, I was supposed to be there is, is the real answer. Well, it was, like, 2019, I was playing mixed with Stacy, and I played men's pro doubles with Brandon Hubschman, but anyways... Um, I was playing with Stacy and the day before I had the, the, the Margaritaville Margarita tent. I only <laughs> yeah, had yeah. two margaritas, but they Holy like God. they like they're strong, you know? Some juice and, boxes. 
<laughs> and and I wasn't, uh, you know, in Florida down here, it's like, you know, when you're dehydrated because you just sweat oh, yeah. nonstop when you're over there, it's like, I don't even, I'm not even sweating, you know, it's like, okay, I'm perfectly fine. And then we played this grueling, it was, I think we we're like five Oh, it was like five Oh makes or something. And it was like 40 teams and we were yep. grueling through the day. And then I looked at Stacy, I'm like, Stacy, I am cramping hard. Like oh. in the warm up, in the warm up, cramping hard, and I put Stacy on the left because I just couldn't move, and oh, we wow. almost we almost won. <laughs> it, it, like, it, it played singles with a helper. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing on the left, and this was like we. I don't know if we won our first round, and the the our first round was like an hour and a half. And then oh, wait, do you know do you know Medi Cazelli out there? Yeah, Medi? yeah. So we yeah, played yeah. Medi, <laughs> and he was like a three five at that time. But, He's you a know, he, he wasn't a 3-5, you know, and uh, it was like an hour and a half the first round. And then we played like four loser bracket matches. And I look at Stacy and I'm like, I cannot move. Move, yeah. So <laughs> I played on the right. <laughs> Dude, man, you know, it's funny, man. Lucky for me, knock on wood, I've only, um, I've cramped twice, I think once or twice my whole life. So I've been so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, it was so bad. I literally got back to the Airbnb and I was on the floor of the shower, like, like crying full body crying. I had an <laughs> IV. Oh, I had an IV. I felt like a brand new woman. Cause I had to play men's pro at 8 a.m. The next day it's like oh. 9 p.m. And I'm on the shower floor. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you, I'm an early riser, but those 8 a.m. Um, start times are brutal. Cause you really think about it. It's not 8 a.m. I mean, you got to get there. Think about it. 745. They do the national anthem. So there's 15 minutes cut off right there. You're not warming up. Yeah. You know, you got to get there by like seven get a good warm up. So you're really up like someone for me too, which maybe we'll get into later. Like I'm a little strict about like my regiments and stuff. Like you're up by like, you know, five forty five six just to get the day started, you know, mm. but um, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so Gabe, what are, what are your goals with pickleball? It sounds like you're teaching, you uh, want to play at the pro level. You're obviously very good at singles. Are you trying to get, move into doubles as well or, or you can get into those top spots. What's your, what's your goals? Oh man, that's so, it's a good question. There's a lot of answers to that. Um, goals are, at least from the singles aspect would be, I know this may sound kind of cliche, but just try to meddle as much as I can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To every event I go to. So I'm kind of more of a, the believer of just quality over quantity. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when I do pop out, like I'm going to like, you know, bust sure. ass. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would just say probably here's the thing too, I guess, cause I only play so many amount of tournaments. I was actually looking at this the other day when I was looking at the rankings, it's like really the top three, four spots, you know, you got Ben, J dub Tyson, J they play full schedules. So just by default, they're going to have mm -hmm. more points than me just cause they're playing more. Mm -hmm. So really I would say if I can finish top five, six for the end of the year, even seven is cool with me, you know, to be honest. But, um, it's just tough, man. And, you know, this is kind of a conversation me and Julio have had on the podcast. It's um, not even on a sponsorship type of thing. It's just I don't think, you know, this is why I'm kind of half in, half out. I just don't see, unless you're Ben or, you know, Tyson, Simone, you're not really making what I think anyway. a, a, a living just off. And I'm talking just not having to teach, you know, just from prize money and sponsorships, like enough to just quit your job and, and just play pickle. You know what I mean? So, you know, my goal is, you know, like last year, I think I played 15 or 16 tournaments. So if I can get in the range of, you know, 12 to 15 this year and and do well, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? But I'm definitely not going to be out there, you know, unless, like I said, right sponsorship opportunity comes where they're like, hey, we'll give you a budget for X amount and we'll pay you maybe a stipend, you know, to cover at least some of your costs. If you give up teaching, then, you know, then you'll see me at every tournament. But until mm -hmm. then, it's like you know, I'm fortunate enough. I make a nice living doing what I do. And it's for me to give that up would have to be, you know, ex extraordinary or whatever. If that, yeah. Did I say that right. Extraordinary. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, like how the pros really make a living. Cause you're right, mm -hmm. Gabe, it is very top heavy, right? It's the top pros pulling the bigger sponsorships. The prize money is stacked for the people coming at the top and then they get matched from a lot of their sponsors. So if you win, it's a great deal. Uh, but if you're coming in, you know, outside of the top three, it can be really tough, especially, you know, traveling 
you have to do a flight, a hotel, yeah. the rental car. There's there's a lot of expenses that are involved. Yeah. And then you're giving up all the teaching, um, right? Yeah. No, and, and like you just said, I mean, here's the thing too, and it's like I hate to use Ben, ben as ugh, Ben as an example, but like, you know, you look at the prize money breakdowns. Let's just say you even make twenty five hundred a tournament, you match it, okay, five grand. Only one person's getting that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So and then the next person gets like 1200 you know, and the thing is there's so many good players, you know, coming, especially like in those Florida tournaments, man, you're getting those tennis guys that are coming. It's not an easy grind. And I'll use this as an example, man. It's like I played U.S. Open last year and, you know, first round I played, I, I don't remember dude's name. Then I played Fad. Mm. I beat Fad. Then I lost to Ben in the semis. Then he goes on to play the finals against Tyson. So he played two matches, three against would have been Tyson. I got to go to backdraw, right? And my day starts at what, 8 a.m.? Mm-hmm. I have to play uh, Pablo Telez, great player. Uh, Juan Araya, great player. Then I end up playing Zane. And then I end up playing uh, AJ for bronze. So I ended up playing, I think, seven or eight matches, almost triple what Ben played and Tyson. And I get 750 at the end of the day, matching, okay, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm at 1500. And let, let's just say I, I have an off day, whatever. My flight flight's delayed. I'm, I'm jet lagged. I get fourth. I get zero. You know what I mean? Right. So, and I think a lot of people just don't understand that. And, um, you know, it's funny because, like, my, I was telling you, my, my boss at work, um, Steve McElroy, like, this was maybe middle of last year. He comes up to me and he's like, hey, he's like, hey, Gabe, you're like top 10, right? In pickle. He's like, dude, how, how much you making? And I'm just like, <laughs> I, and maybe like 15 grand for the year, 20. I'm like, <laughs> like you know, it ain't, it's not what it seems. And he's like, oh man, that, that stinks. And I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. But, um, you know, like, obviously I'm, I'm more part-time with it. And I just play singles. I'm the singles guy. But, um, a lot of people ask me, man, like, why don't you play more dubs? And the thing is, is, um, like I said, dude, draws are so stacked. Everybody plays doubles. And if we're just being realistic, like I'm probably not going to medal. like Ben and a dead goldfish are going to get first. Tyson <laughs> plays with are gonna get second. You know, maybe Adam Stone Deck will get third. Like yeah. it's tough. And then, like I said, man, you break it down fourth, fifth, sixth. If you're splitting seven hundred bucks, is it even worth it at that point? And then you still gotta grind. It's not like you can just be off and and hope. You know, like you get there. So, um, to me, I just I'd rather take kind of the guarantee money and just stay home and work rather than just go out there and don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sound like um yeah. bratty. Like, I love the game. I want to be out there. But if it doesn't make financial sense, then it's like, it just doesn't make sense to be out there just to like say, hey, guys, I play pickle and I want to play doubles. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. But yeah. um, I, I think it's getting better, uh, especially than it was like a year or two ago, you know, before the mm-hmm. tours. It's like, for you know, sure. Pros are going around. They're sleeping on people's couches, you know, like so that they, their expenses are low and that's like the only yeah. way you can really make any money. And then you got to teach camps in between. That's and... what I'm saying. A lot of people don't see that. These guys are teaching camps and clinics on the way there. Like I said, it's just the game's not at the point yet where it's just, you can just, you know, drop and haul ass and do whatever you want to, you know, like to me, you don't have that luxury yet to just show up to a tournament three days early and train and, and have that little luxury. It's like, no, you got to show up a week early, do your camp for two, three days, then be at the tournament site and play. Like it's a grind. And, um, you know, kudos to these guys all doing it. It's just, um, you know, different strokes for different folks. And I'm, I kind of like what I do. And and Julio gives me props for this. And people can say I'm kind of half in, half out. But it's like I'm, I'm trying to just do what's best for me at the end of the day. And it, I'm kind of that one-man band. So – it just is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. You know, you, uh, you, you at the end of the day, you got to make that money. So <laughs> got to, and man, I'm not complaining at all. Living in LA. I mean, it's beautiful, but as you guys probably know, it ain't cheap. <laughs> right. Well, and it's like, you know, pros on the, you know, what people don't realize it's like, okay, good player comes. Like they don't just instantly get money. You know, no. they have to, they have to grind it out and like yeah. go to so many tournaments. And then it takes like a year to, for most people to get good partners. So mm-hmm. then you have to pay all this money. And like Rob Nunnery talked about it, you know, he, he like, you know, spent, he, he was like, you know, in the red in pickleball, yeah. you know, and he's a top player. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you guys played any tennis, but it's, it's, it's almost like when you're on the tennis tour and you're trying to make it. And, um, we're fortunate enough, like, um, sorry, I, I hate to ramble on, but we actually, we had a tournament at our club. Um, it was a 25 K ITF. So this is, you know, for lower level pros trying to make it, or, you know, guys that are like uh, maybe injured and are trying to come back. 
And I was talking to these guys because I ended up actually stringing for the tournament. And I was talking to a few of them like, hey, man, like how much do you make? Like if you lose stuck in third round, he's like, dude, I'm, I'm five, six hundred bucks. And I'm like, I'm so I'm kind of like, why do you do it? He's like, you know, for these guys, they're fortunate, you know, maybe their parents are wealthy and can support them. But they're like, dude, I just love the grind. But he's like, I don't do this for the money, man. I'm in the hole almost every tournament. And um, I'm like, it's almost like pickle, you know, where it's like you just said, it's a grind. And someone like Nunnery's probably in the hole. I mean, dude, you do the entry fees alone. You're paying three events. You're what mm-hmm. five, six hundred bucks deep right there. Factor in, you know, the hotel, right. flight, uh, rent a car, you know, food. You got to eat, and it it adds up, man. And I, I do I do my expenses for the month and and give them to Electrum. I mean, even for someone like me, man, when I'm there for a day, you know, and and I I get the hardest shit for it because I'm literally in the day before, out the night of. Like, <laughs> it still adds up, man. Like, even just yeah. for for Phoenix for a day, it was still almost like 800 bucks. And mm-hmm. I'm not even balling out, man. I'm taking <laughs> Southwest, <laughs> taking my two Uber. I'm getting breakfast, lunch. I'm getting some Chipotle. Like it ain't like I'm eating at Mastro's, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it adds up very quick. And then, you know, you factor in times two. You're there for men's doubles, mixed doubles. It adds up very fast. And even if you make 1000 2000 bucks, and if you didn't have a sponsor, you add it up, you're, you might be, 200 bucks profit like you know you got to do the math yeah it it definitely it's definitely expensive and in order to get to the the top you just have to go through that grind and not a lot of people can do that and i and i don't think a lot of people outside the pro circle really know a lot of that no you know and and that's the thing i think there's this this kind of misconception like you know they see ben simone tyson you know like the the top three and it's like it looks glorious but there can only be a handful of them you know what i mean Mm. and that like you guys just said, it, it's it definitely caters to those upper echelon top pros. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. <laughs> so Gabe, it sounds like you you had a pretty good run in tennis. You're still teaching. You did p- play paddle tennis at a pretty high level. Yeah, I mean the thing is, um, it's it's funny. That's kind of like a uh, how should I say it? It's almost like a it's almost like Fight Club. It's kind of its own <laughs> sort of. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, I grew up playing, obviously, tennis, basketball. I grew up playing a lot of paddle. Um, when I was a kid, I'd go out there with my dad a lot. And um, it's just a great recreational game. There was always tournaments within the community, but it was always like just the only people that would play would be the ones from Venice. So it was its own kind of game, and you're just playing the same people. Sure. Uh, but I mean, I mean, I would say I played at, sure, at a high level. Um, there were definitely guys much better than me, um, like the Dorner brothers. Um, Brian Wan's a great player. Um, but, um, same thing, like where I live, it's like 40 minutes from where I live. So yeah, we just kind of go out there. It's more of a social thing. And then if you've ever been to LA, I mean, it's on Venice beach. So yeah. you're on the beach. It's more of kind of, um, an experience. You know what I mean? It's, if you ever seen white man can't jump, that's where they filmed okay. it. Okay. So, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess what I was getting at is if there's anything from those sports that you think pickleball needs or should adopt or any takeaways from your other sports. Um, well, I'll, I'll say this to give credit because I, I don't play as much paddle anymore for, for personal reasons, but um, paddle helped me a lot. I got to give it credit because it's um, similar to pickleball singles where it's all chip and charge. So growing up playing a lot of paddle um, and we have some family friends that have courts in their backyard because before pickle was a thing, people that didn't have a big enough backyard would put paddle tennis courts in their backyards. So we have a bunch of family friends that still have paddle tennis courts. So my dad and I would just sometimes borrow their courts and play a lot of paddle singles. And um, I always give credit where credit's due, and it really helped me a lot. Definitely translates, as do other sports. But to answer your question, like what could they take away to implement in a pickle to make it more like exciting or something? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, it's like from the paddle aspect, maybe a little controversy, just get some characters. <laughs> but it's like you can't really like teach that or how are you going to bring that in? Mm-hmm. Um, I well, don't know. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you went there because John can probably explain this better than me. You are known for bringing some emotion and passion to the court and maybe a little <laughs> bit of controversy. Uh, do you want to, do you want to touch on that? Do you want to add anything, sure. John? Well, yeah, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, Gabe, you, especially in singles, of course, uh, you're, you definitely put your passion out there. And I, sure. and I, I love personality on a court. Like, I mean, like, I don't want to watch two robots play, you know, like I want to see some fire, you know, I'll say some names, John, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, 
you know, and, and I just want to see like, you know, something exciting. And then, you know, you, for example, you know, you bring a lot of that and you kind of get some, some hate sometimes, especially in the pickleball forums um, and in the comments. So it's, uh, it, it's interesting to know like what you think about all that um, and like what you would tell those people. Oh man, if I could really tell them what I wanted, it'd be different. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this to answer your question. I, I, I said, I go off on tangents, but um, I said this on my podcast, Tyson a- Apostol, I don't want to butcher his name, the one from Survivor who's in mm-hmm. the pickle yeah. game a little bit. Um, if you remember, and we could even talk about it, when I put Hannah on blast last year at, at San Clemente, he was like, man, don't don't respond or, or engage with stuff like that because if like your truth, your fans, you know, whatever, I'm, whatever fans will will do it for you and and he was right so um that's why I, I try not to engage and you know the thing is man the beauty about this sport is it's so inclusive but mm-hmm. at the same time it's bad because it is so inclusive and like i said coming from a tennis background you know it is a gentleman's sport and you know we have what i call kind of tennis etiquette you know what i mean so you know you might see on the court like dan said a bunch of time like i give generous calls and stuff because i don't want to be that guy who's known as a hook or you know what i mean stuff yeah. like that but um, I just think, man, you know, like I said, half these people, I hate to be mean, just they don't even know what they're talking about. It's like, let's get on a court and play like you can't, you know what I mean? So and the thing is, I, I don't want to say her name because because she co-signed this, but maybe for some people, man, I'm just like a little much and I'm not trying to play like the racist card, but it's like whatever little color dude with some flair, <laughs> like, maybe it bothers them. They want it to be a little more conservative. They want that robot feel. They want that clean cut, like Roger Federer type look. Mm. And it's like, I'm not that guy. And if I'm not for you, then guess what? Watch somebody else. Like, it's not that hard. Um, I don't know your guys' music taste, but if you don't like rap, then go listen to what you listen to or what you like. Then some people are not for some people. Like, I don't like country music, but I'm not going to say it's bad. Like, it's just not for me. But I mean, so if Gabe Joseph is not your cup of tea, then go watch (laughs) J.W. Johnson or Ben Johnson. (laughs) (laughs) But, um... The thing is, man, and like I said, I know I sidetracked, but it's like, to me, it's like, how does it make it bad when someone just shows emotion? Like, I remember Curio saying that, like, it's like, be- like, because I show emotion and I'm vulnerable, like, that makes me like a bad person. Like, no, I'm just being real out there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, obviously, I care. And if I expect better for myself, and that's how I react, and that's how I react. Now, if I act out of line or something or do something out of character, then I'll check myself or somebody will check me, check me for me, I guess, but that just is what it is. And that's what I was telling Julio on the podcast. I think, I think people, we need more characters. And like I said, that's not something you can just bring out or like instill in somebody. But like you said, it is boring watching two robots out there. And, and, and that tennis has that problem too. And I've said that before, man, like, like credit to like David Ferrer, but it's like, I want to see some characters. I don't want to just see mm-hmm. like David Ferrer and, I don't know, like Batista Agut just out there grinding. Like they're awesome players, but there's no charisma. There's no personality. Right. It's like two guys out there just playing like a mental battle and out there just playing tennis. Like I want to see some flair, man. And a perfect example, I don't know if you guys watched the Australian Open, but look at Kyrgios and Kokonakis, man. They were mm-hmm. they were selling out the arena oh, in, I know. Du- in doubles. So not only were we talking about doubles, but – to watch two guys that got a wild card who weren't even ranked in doubles to end not and they won the slam like it just goes to show man like they're bringing different fans like they're entertaining they're ecstatic they're exciting people want to see that so it's just different like i said man different strokes for different folks and I, i'm not going to change it is what it is <laughs> yeah well and it's also interesting uh that you said you know it's not like you can just people some people can't just like flip a switch and be like oh i'm gonna be entertaining now you know yeah. what i mean you always Dude, gonna have those characters i just want more of them yeah and let me tell you like man this, this is not an act like and it's so funny because the way i am on the court is kind of different than how i am in real life like i'm actually <laughs> super calm like cool collective off the court it's just um i think definitely like being an only child and being super competitive like i just don't like to lose and obviously like credit to ben j dub tyson these guys like that have beat me like straight up like Sometimes I do feel like, though, I am just playing me versus me. And obviously, mm-hmm. sometimes they play a little better than me. But that's just, I just sometimes just expect the most out of myself. And I remember, like, even in my last match in, in Mesa, like, I hit some incredible volleys. And I'm still, like, with my head down, like, disappointed. And Dan's, like, as Joseph still turns around in, in disbelief, like, after hitting <laughs> a great volley. And he's, like, why can't I do that every time? Like, you know, it just is what it is. And like I said, man, it's just 
it's natural. Like it's, it's just, it's not an act, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, so, well, Gabe, you're, you're preaching to the choir cause John and I are also both only children who are extremely competitive and sometimes outspoken on the court. <laughs> so you guys we're like all in the same club. What was that? Do you guys like being an only child? I, I mean, so I have, I have a uh, half siblings, but you know, I'm like pretty much an only child. Um, because I just got raised by my mom, um, and my stepdad, but, uh, I, I mean, I kind of like it cause I'm spoiled. So I'm not a I brat, love- but I'm spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I, how about you, Stacy? The same. My, my mom, uh, always used to say you can be spoiled, but you can't act spoiled. So I guess to John's mm-hmm. falling in line with John, but, uh. Yeah, I and then I played softball growing up, so I felt like I always had a bunch of sisters. But at least uh, parents' attention was on me, I guess. Yeah, I always tell people I love it. Like if I could like do life over again, be reborn or something, I'd still want. <laughs> I loved it. Um, but the the credit, I always got to credit my parents, man. Like um, they were literally like, obviously they're my parents, but more like siblings because we they were super engaged and and always active in what I had going on in, in my mm-hmm. life. So. Um, it, obviously they're my parents. I respected them, but it was always kind of that sibling feeling. And luckily for me, man, like my dad did all sports activities with me. So if I played basketball, he was one of the coaches or assistant. If I, he taught me tennis, you know, we played paddle. So he was always hands-on and then kind of off the sports realm. Mom was always involved in all that. So I got lucky, but I, I, I kind of tell you like, man, when I get married, if, if I, if, and when I do get married, I think I just want to <laughs> get, you know, but, but we'll see. <laughs> It's a lot cheaper, just one kid. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a puppy. That that's enough as is. So, <laughs> what kind of pup is it? A, is it a Frenchie? French bulldog. Yeah, his yeah, name's yeah. Cool. <laughs> Oh, I know, because uh, Olivia McMillan, my girlfriend, loves Frenchies, and she just wants one. I think we've seen yours. Uh, they're the best. They're yeah. all, they have personalities, man. They're they're people. Yeah, and you know, you for uh, going back to it, you talked about Curios. Now your Instagram yeah. handle used to be Baby K, Baby Curios. What what Maybe. happened? What what why'd you uh why'd you go away from that? Uh, you know, I think I was. Uh, it's funny. I think I was in Florida with Share Bear with Ryan mm-hmm. Cherry, and I don't know. You know, it's so funny, man. It's a long story, but um, you guys remember when they started doing the question polls on Instagram back in like yeah. twenty, and you could have people ask you some. And I remember I had a tennis client ask me. They're like, hey, so you can't be Baby Curios forever. What's gonna be your name, like your IG handle, like in the future, like Midlife Curios? So, <laughs> I didn't hit back, man, because my my birthday was in January. I'm like, damn, dude, I'm gonna be 25, like, still baby curios, and I'm like, ah, oh, like, I don't know. I was like, I think it's just time to be me. So, and the thing is, too, and I, I loved it. I kind of on the podcast, um, I said like everyone at the tournaments would always call me Baby K too, mm-hmm. and I liked it honestly. But then after like the seventh, ninth one, it's not that it even bothered me. I'm just like, okay, it's time to get like my own identity, your own so. brand, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I think it's just time to be Gabe Joseph, and um, I don't know. I just like I'm. I tried a couple names. If you listen to so, um, Sixty Third, I was uh, I was thinking about Poppy Champagne, like like Drake's name, but backwards. I was like, I wanted to call this cool and slick. <laughs> and then I was like, man, if I was a rapper, what would my rap name be? I was like Flawless G, but it was taken. And then um, once I was like, I was like, you know what? Fuck it, just gonna be Gabe Joseph. And then my favorite, <laughs> I was like. Just that's gonna be me. <laughs> Did Curios ever follow you? He follows me on Twitter, so but it's my uh, old Twitter. But um, I knew you're gonna ask this question, but it's funny how I even came up with that name is this was before I had Instagram, and I was like, I was gonna make an Instagram. I think it was like 2015, and I was like, man, what's a cool Instagram handle, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to just be Gabe Joseph or the real Gabe Joseph, you know? I was like, I want to come up yeah. with something cool. And I remember at the time, if you watch tennis, Grigor Dimitrov, they were calling him Baby Federer. And I'm like, man, whenever I'm at the tennis shop, everyone says I look like Kyrgios, kind of play like him a little bit. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be Baby Kyrgios. And I came up with it, and then it just ran with that for forever. And then everywhere I went, it was Baby K, Baby K, you know. But um, yeah, no, but he did follow me on Twitter. And actually, I reached out to him and DM'd him a few times. And he actually mm-hmm. would hit me back. And then um, I think this was like 2016. I saw him at Indian Wells because I'd always go with my dad and he's in the practice court. And if you guys have played nationals, it's on the back court with like the white picket fence. It's like practice court, like 16 or 15. Mm-hmm. You can all sit there in the booth. So I'm sitting there and he just sees me and I've already met him a couple times. And uh, he's like hitting, he misses the ball in the net and he like looks around and he sees me. And he's like, 
hey, what's up, bro? In front of everybody. And everyone kind of <laughs> looks at me man, like a movie. They're like, yo, you know him? And I'm like, <laughs> like, sort of. Like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, he, he's reached out a couple of times. So um, he's a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Curios. I mean, I think like what you were talking about, how they have that tennis etiquette of everybody just needs to be like Roger Federer. I like Federer too, but I love the, the Curioses of the world, you know, and just like bring some flair some personality like throw a racket you know like as long as you don't hit a kid like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like and i, I always co-sign curios but like i'm not for the all the shenanigans like definitely yeah. no nothing vulgar personal but yeah man dude like everyone gives a hard time like dude i'm 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 for the racket throws even it's like dude sometimes you're just frustrated you gotta let it out now i hate to say like don't i just sometimes you don't want to break it because you know i always think like man you could have gave that racket at a kid or something yeah but yeah, man, when you got to let it out, you got to let it out. It's nothing like personal or anything. You know what I mean? But um, here's the thing too, man, back to the Federer point. It's like, especially even in pickleball, because I've already seen it like recently is um, people often get misconstrued, man, just like winners with being like these influential like icons. And it's like, just because you're a winner, man, or like, doesn't just mean you're like the shit. <laughs> right. And, and like, I think Kulu and I had this convo. It's like, man, people are so chic, man. Like, Ben going to Yola or Jula, whatever it's called, like people already buying the paddles just cause. And it's like, I always look at it like tennis, man. Like if you're a real tennis player, you know that any decent tennis player cannot play with the Roger Federer racket. Like it's too heavy. It's too mm -hmm. small. Like people just buy it cause they think like it's going to make me better. And it's like, that's not always the case, bro. And, um, yeah. It's just funny, man. And then, dude, I, I'm not going to throw shade, but if, if even if, like, I stay out of the pickleball drama, but if you heard this, this shit I hear behind closed doors, it's like, these people are not any icon you probably should be looking up to, you know? Dude, With yeah. All I the mean, dirt and grease I hear behind closed doors, so. I mean, uh, you know, like, we're in it, you know, as much as we are, even though, and there's just, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is that it's a small world. It's like a Bravo TV show, you know? Very it's like everyone just goes from one tournament to the next. So of course you're going to have drama and like gossip and BS, right? Because just people there that's like, that's the only people they hang out with, you know? Yeah. That's so. why. And, and Lauren often from AP, she always gives me a hard time. She's like, man, you don't have enough pickleball friends. You need to make more pickleball friends. You're always in and out. You're too Mr. Cool. And I'm like, I'm like, I just stay in my lane. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> no, that's just, and it is what it is. But you know, and, and I've said this before, man, just sometimes like you just said, man, in these pickleball tournaments too, these little flyby relationships, man, some of these, some of these people are just not to be trusted either. And I'm not even saying for me personally, but I'm just saying, man, you get caught up in this little circle, man. It, mm -hmm. it, it goes around very quick. It's a little, little revolving door, you know, and everything gets back. So, you know, I don't know, man, just, I just keep to myself. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what we do. I mean, a lot too. I mean, I'm friends with, you know, pretty much, you know, everybody, but, uh, or like good acquaintances, I would say, but we pretty yeah. much just stay with like, so I'll hang out with Stacy and then, uh, the Hubschmans, you know, Brandon Hubschman. Uh, Name sounds. Okay. Uh, just like, you know, our little Florida crew and yeah. we just hang out and then, you know, we're not like trying to mix in with everybody and all that stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, man, it's like, it's almost no reason to be buddy, buddy too, because, it, and it's, it's funny, like, I always see, like, pickleball pros with, like, athlete or, like, pro pickleball player in their bio, and it's like, dude, it, if I can re DM and reach out to you just as easy as you did to get me on this podcast, like, we're, we're nobody. <laughs> I mean, like, and I always tell people, I'm like, man, the day I can go to, like, a club in LA and be like, I'm Gabe Joseph, and they just let me in for free or, like, give me a table, that's right. when I'll stay on it, but until then, like, I'm just regular, normal Gabe, you know what I mean, so... I think, I, I, yeah, I think on my Twitter, it says like above average pickleball player, uh, above average race car driver. And then like, that's it. <laughs> it they inv invented electricity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, I just think, you know, that's the thing that like I said, it's so inclusive and I definitely think it's given people like a bit of a big head to an extent, you know, to mm -hmm. like, I don't go flaunting that I'm this top 10 player, like even at my club and stuff, like it just... You know, like I said, man, I'm just normal, regular Gabe. And, and sometimes my clients, like, they don't even know. And they find out through, like, because we have a little bio sheet. And they're like, dude, you, like, you're number five at this? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, they're like, dude, that's amazing. Like, you're, like, somebody. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, I guess. Like, sure. <laughs> I'm a hero, I guess. So I don't know. <laughs> hey, yeah, just roll with it. Yeah. But, um. So, so it's a lot of drama on the pro scene. It's, maybe everybody doesn't know. I won't ask you to dish out. 
But is there anybody that you want to give a shout out that you would deem a winner that is at the top that everybody would know? A deem a winner? Yeah, and quote unquote winner. Um. Yeah, and, and I, I would say this, and he's cl- pretty clean cut. I, I would honestly say J Dub. He gets my my tip yeah. of the hat, and um, you know, and and I, I'm just gonna be honest. Like he is a little robotic to an extent, but I I told him when Lauren interviewed me for PP or APP Mesa, uh, dude's putting in the hard yard, so he's deserving of it. And if we just want to keep it a thousand, I told him um when we were waiting in the tent, I was like, bro, I'm so happy you won a couple of those PPAs because. I'm like, how sweet is it that the non-contracted player goes in and takes their money? I was like, I'm happy for you, bro. And, um, you know, he's in a sweet little position. And, you know, like I said, he's fortunate enough to be in that situation where he can play full time and, mm-hmm. and grind at every tournament. Um, so I think it, he gets my my nod of whatever t- tip of the cap for for winner. I think that's a good one. I, I think, yeah. and I, I do honestly, think like um, he's just the first one that came to my mind. So if, I mean, if I really thought about it, but I, I would probably say J Dub is 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 my vote. <laughs> Definitely, there's there's other ones, but I I agree J Dub is amazing, and I do think he's getting better at the speaking and putting himself out there. Yeah, uh, for sure. And like I said, man, it's it's like for him that and that's fine. Like yeah, like I'm not gonna try to pull his teeth and and have conversation. Like and honestly, he came up to me and was speaking to me. He was yeah. like he was so shocked because he was like, dude, I hear you don't practice like. <laughs> what and blah blah he, you know we just had a cool conversation because like i said man i some people find me like if you didn't know me off first impressions kind of be like dickish or standoffish and it's like if he engaged and i had conversation with him like we're we're cool you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i'm i'm there's this one quote i like it's like um you're better than nobody and nobody's better than you so it's like i'm i'm cool you know if you want to speak and hang out sure i'm cool like it, it's not like my shit don't stink so mm-hmm. um yeah but but uh, if it wasn't J Dub, who would have been your pick? And then we'll get John's pick as well. Uh, I everybody probably knows this, but I'm a big Team Waters fan, so Lee and Annalie <laughs> Waters would uh, get my cap. But I also love the Johnsons, uh, all all South Florida folks. So keeping it in the in the area. Oh. Uh, you know, it's fine. I actually I really I don't know the Waters at all. Um, obviously, I've just seen them at tournaments, but um, I guess you can't be mad at that. <laughs> 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 I know they're going for like freaking like most style and drip i'll tell you that I, I do see their suggested posts on my instagram and they'd be like all gucci'd out and stuff and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we're getting a lot of money on a different level over here so <laughs> they're always rocking balenciaga and gucci and all that yeah. stuff. yeah uh but how about you john who's your pick hmm. i don't know i have so I, I don't know enough to be like okay you know this person like isn't gossip or what you know whatever but I, but I have some favorites on the tour. Like I love Tyson. <laughs> I, I, I love my boy Tyson. Um, okay. Kyle's a little controversial at times, but I love Kyle. I think he's a good dude. Like when you hang out with him, he's an OG. You, I haven't hung out with him, but you know he's he's grandfathered in. <laughs> yeah. Well, like when you hang out with him, like you know, out, like out of the court, like he's come stay with me a few times. Just a chill dude. Just wants to play Fortnite. You know, like <laughs> and surf. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he he doesn't care about that stuff. Um. 420 friendly or, or were they drug testing? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, what are some other good guys? Uh, what about Jay De Villiers? I, I don't know him as well. I don't know. Okay. Them. I don't know him as well. Um, How about Cher Bear? Come on, we gotta get get love for Ryan Cherry. That's my boy. <laughs> I mean, I love his enthusiasm and his uh, work <laughs> ethic and his uh, and everything. I mean, he just seems like a good time. I'd, I'd want to party with him for sure. He's got training regiment let me tell you so uh, i want to party i want to party with share bear <laughs> i party with share bear a couple times and uh he's the man he he definitely knows how to have a good time um such a good time that i actually missed my flight but that's another story <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i like I, li- I like rob nunnery and uh, uh a couple other guys too um but you know there, there, there are some uh there's always you always have bad apples in every group but i think a lot of the people yeah. are pretty good yeah you know and um i've had like i said i've had pretty good experiences but like i said my besides like frank ryan cherry matt chow and a few other pros like like i said i'm pretty fly by just in and out so mm-hmm. actually i almost don't get an opportunity to really meet them nor not that i think nor do i want to but it's like you know if we cross paths cool if not then we just we keep it pushing you know but um yeah i mean i'm, I'm like I'm sure there's plenty of good people on tour <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would I would say there's more good people than not, but um, if you ever want the drama, you just go to the YouTube comments of any APP or PPA stream, <laughs> and you will get any bit of 
any bit of gossip that you could hope for. <laughs> yeah. So funny. I, I rarely tune in, but I did tune in to PPA. Was it Red Rock? For literally five minutes, man. And um, it's so fun. I was reading the comments, the YouTube comments, like you just said. And it literally ventured off into um, who is pro pickleball women that have kids and then guys that have kids and then it just goes on oh i heard this person had a kid with with this pro and and this and that and <laughs> it goes so far left and i'm just like man i'm looking at it that's why i can't take it i'm just like dude i'm like grown people talking about like other people's business like this is just like pathetic <laughs> and i'm like you guys have nothing better to do like at least watch the match <laughs> um but yeah man it's just it's too funny like i said it's great it's so inclusive but the keyboard warriors are are just undefeated you know it's unreal <laughs> yeah, i remember i was watching one of the it was like it was a singles day and it might have been the mesa tournament and one of the trolls was like I, I don't remember the name he said but like um oh it was like hugh johnson i can't wait to see hugh johnson uh play or like bend over or whatever and there was like you know some poor guy you know he's probably like middle age like oh who is that like they're like, yeah. what do you mean? Like Larry, it was like Larry or something. He's like, somebody help Larry out. Hugh Johnson. Not, not tech savvy guy. <laughs> like but yeah, man, the, in the draw. <laughs> you know, it's funny that that you that you uh, that you um bring it back into it is um I, I some like I said, man, I read those comments sometimes, even like the live chats, because I always watch my footage back to to study game, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, and I, I'm not gonna lie, man, it's not even not that it's hurtful. I'm just like real, like it, it's almost like I was raised, man. Like if you don't have nothing nice to say, just don't say it. And it's yeah. like guys like oh joseph still plays like he's relevant and it's like like who the fuck are you like on <laughs> and it's like but julio told me man it's like the best recipe just to get them to shut up is just to go out there and win and medal and it really is man like mm -hmm. but you know that's just the one downfall man especially with social media and shit it's just everyone gets their the little two cents whether it's just right or wrong it's just gets annoying <laughs> yeah well you know people feel like you know that that people don't have feelings and they always give athletes crap, you know, like, uh, you know, it's like, I think of the Cam Newton when Cam Newton lost in the Super Bowl, and he was like sitting down crying. And he didn't want to do an interview and everybody's like, Oh wow. What a poor loser. It's like, dude, this dude just like wanted this his whole life. And he was yeah. this close. Like, and you're going to, you're going to like tell him he's like a bad sport just because he had emotion, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, man, and I'll, I'll end on this note is just, one, these people will never say this to your face. And mm. that's actually happened to me where I think I played Mesa 2020 or oh, man, I don't know if it was 2020. It was some tournament where they like featured my name. They're like, oh, come watch top pros, blah, blah, blah. And some guy's like, who's Gabriel Joseph? Like this guy's irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then Warnick actually points him out to me. And same thing, it's this old geezer, man, who's just standing there. Didn't even acknowledge me. I'm like, dude, like guy's just talking out of his ass. And, um, and that's why, man, like I said, like in my last interview, like, dude, it's just a game, bro. Like we're out here sponsored to, to play a, a, a winky dink little game, man. It's like, you know, it's just kind of pathetic to an extent, mm. like these guys talking out of their ass. But, um, like I said, dude, they'll never say it to your face. So, you know, you'll never win from the sideline. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I kind of want to actually, you mentioned Julio again. I kind of want to get back to your, uh, your podcast safety third. Yeah. Um, First off, I like the name because uh, mm -hmm. I'm a race car driver and we always make a joke like, you know, safety second or what, you know, it's definitely not safety first, like joking around. So how'd you come up with the name safety third? <laughs> Say that again. Um, I said safety is no accident, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so to answer your question, how we came up with the, uh, how we came up with the name. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, got to give Scott Crandall some credit for this. So back in our early live ball days. Scotty would just say this little phrase and it could be something as simple as like, we're, you know, we're playing uh, live ball on the tennis court and someone's shoes untied. So we would kind of all stop like, Hey, Hey man, tie your shoe safety third. And it was just this little thing, or there'd be like a ball behind you or mm. you might trip the ball. Hey guys, stop real quick. Yeah. You got to clear the ball safety third. So it just became, and when Scotty would first say it, it just completely was like a click. It caught me so off guard. I'm like, safety third? What? Like, it's always safety first. And then mm -hmm. I would like ask him, like, safety third, so what are the first two? And he had like no answer. Just like, is it a little inside joke? Yeah. So I was like, you know, it'd be like, I, was, I don't remember if I was like, it'd be a great name for a podcast, but I told Scotty, I'm like, dude, you got to trademark that. It'd be a great name for like an album or something. Like, I'm like, mm -hmm. it'd just be catchy. So fast forward, man. So I'm a big like rap, obviously hip hop dude. Like, I love Nipsey. 
So I remember like I used to have a little vision board when I used to live at my parents' house. So it was like a, a little just whiteboard and I had like five, six goals I wanted to achieve. So I remember one was like obviously graduate school. Um, off the top of my head, I remember it was like get a Maybach or a, or a Rolls Royce. That was like, you know, for the future. Um, start a record label or a podcast. And then um, I had a couple other ones like crack top five in singles in pickle. And I had two more like invest money in, in stocks and whatnot. A few, just a few goals, right? So fast forward, this was this last summer, 2021. Um, and I know Stacy's a lawyer, so you might love this. I, uh, I get elected to do jury duty. <laughs> so I get my little summons in the mail. And I tried, I tried using the COVID excuse not to go, but they re-summons me. They're like, you have to go or $1,000 fine, three days in jail, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm a little too <laughs> jail, so I can't do that. I can't risk it. Um, <laughs> so I end up going. And then the worst part was I get elected on the jury. So I'm like, shit. And um, it sucked because there was 20 of us and I think they needed like five or eight people and I, I was selected and then they let the other like 12 people go. They didn't even interview. So they're like, you're on the jury. The case should last three, four days. Um, so long story short, they give us a notepad. I'm sure Stacy's familiar with the, the court system here. So you're supposed to take notes on, on the case and whatnot. So I'm like, click vision board. I'm like, what do I want to achieve again? And I put <laughs> on Instagram story that day. I wrote down on the notepad. I was like, dude, let's start a podcast. So I wrote on my Instagram story. I was like, going to start a podcast looking for one or two co-hosts like who's down I got a bunch of responses like 50 responses and Julio's like my uncle I love Julio so he's like dude let's do it so then I was like all right next step I'm like I got to find a studio and probably like a audio engineer like a board op someone who can record and um not necessarily like mix stuff but you know whatever if we we mess up which we are in the beginning someone's got to cut edit blah 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 Mm. so I had one of the pros at the club he had a podcast and he had a guy, but he was like in, in Ventura County, which is like an hour and some change for me. And I'm like, dude, it's too far. Like, um, so long story short, my barber, his brother had just graduated from the same school I went to at Sun, And he's like, um, dude, he, uh, like audio engineering and, and whatnot. He had a studio. So, you know, I just put two and two together. I was like, bro, when can you meet? This is what we want to do. And it just it took off from there and then we make it a once a week thing where we record every sunday and then we try to get as many guests and and whatnot and um i know you're probably gonna ask me this but i've been trying to we obviously started off as like tennis pickle and paddle related but i was kind of telling him i want to more venture off and be more like just social cultural you know and just a little broader um, mm-hmm. would be the answer. And, um, so that's why I'm always throwing some music or, or trying to do some cheesy little game and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, like I love Joe Rogan and, and all these pot, like DJ Vlad, I don't know if you watch Vlad TV, breakfast club. And mm-hmm. I just like kind of that general broad audience and my whole thing. I just love when people drop gems, you know what I mean? Cause I yeah. always learn the, I love to learn from other people's like mistakes or experiences. So that way either I can avoid or whatever, if I do go through it, just kind of understand what they were trying to say you know what i mean so that's just kind of my my whole thing with the pod and i love it man and honestly dude it's been pretty like therapeutic and it's just it's great man it's fun to just sit there and just spitball and bullshit <laughs> yeah definitely and you and uh julio what's julio's last name rivera Julio rivera uh he's the underground pickleball movement or something like that on instagram he's a nice yeah. dude i think i've met him once uh you guys have a pretty good rapport i would say you guys have good chemistry so I yeah, think it was a good match. And <laughs> I, I was actually listening to one of the uh uh to one of yours. If there's anyone out there listening right now, um the safety third, I watch it on Spotify. Um I don't know if you're on any other platform. Yeah, we're on all um, um, okay. I, I always do Apple, but you know. Yeah. Okay. Um Julio was giving you he, he was giving you some shit when you were complaining about Zane's serve <laughs> and he was putting you in check. So it was uh, kinda it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny, like you were like, man, you know, this gimmick serve or whatever. And he's like, man, but you need to like learn how to return the ball. (laughs) Just not letting you get away with it. Yeah, he loves to give me humble pie. Um, You know, man, the thing is, is, and it's not specifically just to Zane. um, It's, I'll look at it like this. I, I, like, and Hulu even said it, I'm more of like, I like the aesthetic look. And 
just by default, and I, I'm almost like an old head in, in this mindset, if you look at the game of pickleball, this is why it's kind of like paddle tennis, where the game is supposed to favor the returner. It's not supposed mm. to favor the server. The person at the kitchen first usually is probably going to win the point. So to me, it one, I think it looks shitty, to be mm. honest. It looks like a gimmick, in my opinion. And two, um, it's... And credit to Zane and all these people that put time and effort into it. Like, I'll never do that just because, one, I don't like the look. And, two, it's like I don't have enough time or care to do that. Um, it makes the quality of points very garbagey, in my opinion. And it's honestly, it was like impossible to return. If you saw my last match against Zane, I started just trying to short hop and saber the ball because I'm like, I don't know what to do. If I stand so far back and let it bounce, now I'm a step or two behind the kitchen. And I'm quick as it is. But now my first volley is in a really shitty spot. And if I don't mm -hmm. stick that volley, he's got a, a mid-court ball that now it's like 20 to 80 for me to win the point. Um, and here's the thing too, man. And I, I don't really want to throw shade like that. I had beaten Zane at US Open with the spin serve. And then I lost him at Tampa with the spin serve. So it's not like I hadn't beaten him with it. It's just one of those days he served big. And it's like, I have no answers for it. Now it's one of those... I can see Julio's point, just sucker it up, go get in the lab, learn how to return it. I barely practice as is, which is my fault. But not only that, no one I play with or even out here in Cali serves like that. <laughs> so it's like, where on earth am I going to go practice this serve? I'm like, I'm going to have to go buy like a ball machine and go like re mix up the wires and try to <laughs> form or something to, to do this. So I'm like, no one serves like that. Um, so kudos to him. I mean, he put time and energy into it. Um, I just believe kind of in the classic look where it's just like, you know, I think someone like Tyson has a good serve, but he doesn't need to do the spin serve. He just hits it hard and tries to place it deep. And I think that's how the game should be. I think it should favor the returner. And I think you should just have to develop and construct some points from the back. Like me, I don't want to toot my own horn. Like I have good pass shots. And it's like when you're playing good players like J-Dub and, and Tyson, Ben J, like the margins are small. So you got to just pick your spots and, and go for them. And if you make and you win some, cool. And if you lose some, it is what it is. But I just think, you know, his serve is just so good that my return is just so limp that it's like, shit, you can throw John Doe over there who's a 4-0, let him serve like that and give him the same mid-court ball. He'll beat me too. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see where's like this amazing skill or talent being displayed you know what i mean and people are like well isner has a big serve like this and that but yeah it's not chip and charge in tennis you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that's what you're gonna get to go serve and score points on your serve so that's just kind of how i how i look at it and i i think i have no clue i bet you it'll be eventually banned or outlawed in the app or whatever tournaments they still allow it just because um you know I me mean, man i get angry i wear my heart on my sleeve and <laughs> I even said during the match, I don't think the mic picked it up, but um, when I was probably getting my ass kicked at like 5'9", I was like, I was like, I hope this looks good on TV because I'm like, these are really low quality points. Or like mm -hmm. I said, high quality. I was just trying to be sarcastic because I'm like, I just know out there being frustrated how shitty it probably looks on TV. Um, and I'm just hitting this shit return where I have no idea where the ball's going. And he's just getting this soft little cookie that he just gets to hit 70% by me. And it's like, all right, I guess right. well played. <laughs> I don't have any answers. So yeah, um, and I don't know how Stacy feels about that, but I I think that the um that the spin should go, and it's not like I and I know that Zane um did like you know his accounting thing, and I'm a finance guy too, so I look at the numbers too. Um, but he was like you know doing this analysis of like how many serves he wins, and it's like it's not just the serve return; it's the third. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's like like I said. Here's the biggest problem I have with it is just. I can't get up to the kitchen like uh, like I want to. So mm -hmm. my so my return of serve is already shitty as is. Now I'm a half step behind the kitchen. Like I've, I'm just in such a deep hole at that point that it's like I have no. I'm just begging for mercy. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like I'm just telling you what even goes through my head. I'm like I just need to hit a decent return and just try to get up here and defend. That's literally that's all going through my mind. And um, like I said, I, I was so frustrated last time I played him. I just tried short hopping the ball. I'm like, I don't even care if I look like a clown out here. I'm just going to try <laughs> doing something else because what I'm doing ain't working. So it is what it is. But um, he served really big and well that day. And 
I don't know. Did, did he end up beating J Dub in that tournament, or I, I don't remember. I think he did. I think he did finally beat J Dub. And, yeah. and it's funny because I, I actually think I remember watching it. Now, like you know, J Dub isn't showing emotion, but he did like three eye rolls. He was just like, ugh, like, <laughs> you know, his his pictures said a thousand words of just how frustrated he was with it, and it is what it is, man. I, I don't know. I, I and I, I here's the thing. I'm not null and void to like Julio's perspective, where it's like, okay, we'll just suck it up and you know, you got to deal with the cards you're dealt with. I, I understand that. But I'm just saying, like, I think that the game should just be played normal. <laughs> and I just think it looks better, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? I agree. Well, what, yeah. what about you, Stace? No, I, I, well, I'm, I guess, a pickleball purist. I do think the spin serve is at risk of going away. I think the USA pickleball, when they did the rules this year, kind of went halfway to see what ha what would happen uh they just kind of put it, the rules back to where it was but you know gabe i think you said it the purpose of the serve is to start the rally not to have an advantage uh, exactly the, so i think if you look at how the rules play out the purpose of the serve is not to uh be as you know as much spin or win the rally with aces uh, so I think we will see more of a table tennis rule where you have to have an open palm and no spin. Yeah. And uh, when that happens, we'll see. The USA Pickleball may do it maybe at the end of this year. I'm sure that's in the rules deck, and I'm sure Zane will have another report for them. But uh, <laughs> we'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah, and, and like I said, it's just, you know, the thing is, is like, the way I look at it, it's like if you just if we're playing just normal pivot, it's like you just you gotta go for more for your serve. Try to hit it deeper. Like it is what it is. Like it's just that risk versus reward type of thing. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. That's just kind of how I look at it. And you know, I see like video like Marson and Kyle playing back in the day, and it's like these guys were not they were almost just literally just starting the point, you know, when mm -hmm. there was serve. so obviously serve's gotten a little bigger, but that's just my thing. I just think it has to go for that point and um it's just frustrating to deal with. And honestly, just keeping it a thousand with you, it's just, it's not fun if I'm being honest with yeah. you. Like that match against Zane, like I even said, like in the podcast with Julio, I was like, I don't mind if I go out there and get my ass handed to me, but like I want to at least make it entertaining and at least like I can walk off the court and be like, okay, at least it was fun and I gave like 100%. Like that was just not fun. It was extremely frustrating. And by like after the first game, I'm like, if this goes, you know, 5 2, 7 2, I'm down. It's like, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm going to tank, but I'm like, eh, you know, if I don't yeah. control a few points, he gets to serve. I'm in deep shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is what it is, but enough of the Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> so looking forward, Gabe, what can the pickleball community expect from you? Are you going to be at the U.S. Open? What's your tournament schedule look like? What else yeah. can we expect oh, uh, from you? Uh, same thing. I missed the, the U.S. Open date by... I don't know, a week or two. And that's the thing, man. I don't have, I'm a one man band. I don't have anybody like doing the dates for me or checking or, hey, Gabe, make sure you register for this at 11.59 the night before. Totally forgot. I literally emailed the lady from US Open. I said, hey, life just got in the way. I'm super sorry. Is there any chance you can let me in? Um, yeah, I'll pay right now. I, I don't care. Sorry, buddy. Like, you missed your date. Can't play. I'm like, oh, well. And sometimes, you know what? Like, I, I believe in like, you know, karma in, in the universe and, Sometimes, like, if it's just, if you're not, uh, it, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. So if I'm just not meant to be there, I'm not meant to be there. Now, obviously, it's my fault. I missed it. I'm not trying to make it, like, their fault. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to beg anybody, like, please, please let me in. Like, maybe it's a sign, like, hey, just, you're not supposed to be there, bud. It is what it is. Um, yeah. And, well, even and, as a medalist for the previous year, that's interesting. Hey, you said it on me. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said, it was, dude, it was the same thing at nationals. And I literally told the lady... I was like, hey, because I know they were, you had to have a COVID vaccination. I'm like, listen, half the players aren't coming because they're vaccinated. Like, um, the draw's not even full. Why can't you just let me in? And she's just mm -hmm. like, you know, sucks to suck, bud. You missed your date. And there was still like <laughs> two months to go before the tournament. And I'm like, really? Like, you can't put me in? And the draw ended up being like 12 people or 10 people. I'm like, it's a joke. But like I said, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Um, so where's that? Know, where's that then? Yeah, so we're, um, it's weird. Um, I almost want to give give the four one one and just spill the beans here. Um, I'm in a little weird pending situation, but I was supposed to play St. Louis. I don't know yet, um, but I'll definitely be playing the L.A. Cali swing. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be out here for all that. Um, I think it's what like June, July, August. Um, I know I'm playing a tournament. I think in Pennsylvania with Frank. Um, I think that's in August, and then um, 
I think that's funny. I never even met her or spoke to her a day in my life. A- Andrea Coop reached out to me and she's like, come play uh, Beer City. Mm-hmm. So I th- I'll be out there for that. But, um, you know, aside from the playing aspect, and I know John was going to ask me this, but it's like, I'm trying to, you know, get as what I call as much mailbox money as I can and, and try to get some sponsorship deals and, um, you know, a few things in the works like that. And I said, it's tough being a one man band, but, you know, that's, I got to take care of myself first. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens with that. And um, as you guys kind of said, I feel like I'm a little character and, and charismatic where I'm, I also want to do stuff not like, let's just say I, I sign with a, a clothing brand or a, um, mm. a paddle brand. Like I also want to do some other stuff where, you know, it's like you get to know me a little bit, but do some commercial, something where it's just, it's more engaging. And it's like, I always use this analysis, man. It's like when I was a kid, I wanted to be like Allen Iverson, man. Like he just, he looked cool. Like he had some character. He, he was a baller on the court. Like there's got to be something of that. Like you got to be some kind of um, just influential aspiring person that's like cool on and off the court. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know. I, I hope like the game gets there where we can almost be stars, I guess, to a little extent. But um, I want to do something more in that realm as well. But, uh, you know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you going to be the next Hertz commercial or? Uh... Yeah, no. Nah. I don't <laughs> Who hurts? Um, I didn't. I didn't sign. I didn't sign my my um my passing go money, as I call it. Um, <laughs> I'm not a PPA contracted athlete, so I don't have to do those completely forced hurts posts. That I'm sorry, they're just they're tough to to look at. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, man, like I said, I just I try to stay in my lane and not blend in because I almost feel like it just it discredits almost like the sacrifices and the work you put in when everyone's just doing the same thing, you know, mm. they, and I always use this analogy back in the day, man. It's like, like, was it like 2020 or 2021? Like all the same 15 pros were like on team jigsaw and it's no just to them, but it's like, what makes it so special at that point? If you just got this little niche of pros and the top pros at that, that are on the same thing, it's like, to me, it just devalues it. So it's like, does, Ben Johns or Tyson using Hertz make me want to go rent a car from Hertz. Like I'm just being no. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I feel like it's just so force fed, and you know I I don't know what's in their contracts, but it's it's probably obligated. So yeah, I mean I don't know I don't know. Stacy and I have been talking about getting a drink sponsorship. Uh, I've I've been trying to get White Claw to sponsor <laughs> me for I don't know how long. Bud um, Light Seltzers where it's at too. <laughs> the Bud Light Seltzers. I don't know. I like- I like the Corona seltzers too. Um, yeah, but you know, I mean, listen, man. And I'm not trying to sound like you know sour grapes. I want to see everyone prosper and, and everything. But to me, and, and that's one thing, like you said, it's just once it gets like clickish and everyone's just on the same little wave, that's where like I'm so happy on me, and I just do my own thing and, and stay in my lane because you know at, at some point it's like if you're all just doing the same thing, then what makes you special? You know what I mean? Right. So you know yeah, that's just that. kind of do it. I get well, that. Bef- before we move on, John, I don't know if you heard Gabe. He said, maybe I spill the beans 411. If you're not going to spill it, can you give us like a little hint or tell us when you're <laughs> spilling some beans so we can be on the lookout? Um, I'll put it this way. Once once it's maybe set in stone, uh, I'll, you guys will be the first one I, I tell. Um, okay. Just I got Deal. something in the works that um, I'm, not, I'm not sure yet, but, uh, but we'll All see. Right. All right. Well, we, we'll be watching. <laughs> How about I, I can talk probably off camera, but okay. I, <laughs> that's fine. Are you going to be in uh, Tommy Hill figure? Uh, you're online. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe I'll have to hit up the waters. Maybe I can get Gucci to sponsor me. <laughs> a ripped out outfit or something. And yeah, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. I'm actually, uh, I'll, I mean, I'll throw it out there. I, I'm in talks with Fila and, um, a couple other brands, you know, to, to see if we can work something out and here's the thing man like obviously i want to take care of myself but like honestly i'm not looking to like you know slave these guys away like if they want to if, if numbers work out and we can work something out like i said i and, and you guys can see firsthand like i only sponsor or i only wear and endorse stuff that i actually as cheesy as it sounds do believe in and use so like mm-hmm. i'm not gonna um you know i hate to like diss tyson like i'm not gonna wear sketchers if i don't wear sketchers or, or something <laughs> like that. you know what like, I'm not just going to take on anything that just to take it on, you know what right. I mean? So, you know, right now, Electrum sponsoring me with the paddles and then, um, keto Chris sponsors me with uh, protein bars, Turner grip sponsors me, but they don't pay me. They just give me some free, free grips and stuff. And, um, that's all I have as of now. So 
you know, I'm, I'm looking to take on, you know, a few things, but like I said, I got to firmly believe in it and, and like the vision, like, I'm just not going to show up in some force fit outfit that I don't like or wouldn't wear, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like gotta be something I'm actually going to rock and, and wear and actually enjoy, you know, um, I'm not just going to do stuff for a check. So well, I guess to, to all the beverage sponsors, Pickler and Gabriel Joseph are all looking for a beverage sponsor, <laughs> preferably for John and I, maybe a little alcohol would uh, go a long way for these podcasts, make them more entertaining. So we'll, we'll play little, everybody. Hydrated on the courts. Come on. Oh, that's right. <laughs> H2O. No, H2O. That, 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 that is overrated. We need a white ball <laughs> sponsorship or uh, there's that new company volley or something like that. Uh, that that's a sponsor to pickleball now. Although Can we get happy dad to sponsor the Nelk boys? I don't know if you guys watch. <laughs> Full sun. Oh, what, 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 oh I, I know that podcast, but what the happy dad, what, what is it? Yeah. They made their own white claws or, or like not white claws, their own seltzers. Um, it's oh, called okay. happy. I haven't tried them, but I know that it's like a little trending thing. So mm-hmm. <laughs> what, are, uh, what other non pickleball stuff? Do you have going do on I, in your life? Not non pickle, non tennis, non podcasts. Yeah, I think you're a big Lakers fan, big Kobe fan. What uh, Kobe Lakers fan? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, obviously, I'm a full full time doggy dad, so um, <laughs> I try to spend as much time as I can with Kobe. That's my puppy. Um, like I said, man, I'm big into music and podcasts, so I listen to a lot. I, I'm a rap guy, but it's funny. I, I'm I'm very like cultured and and diverse, so. I'll, I'll put it like my dad's, you know, my dad's in his sixties and my mom. So it's funny, my dad growing up, he's super into music and, and actually one fun fact, you probably would never guess about me. I actually used to be in the orchestra band and I used mm. to play big double bass, <laughs> <laughs> play electric bass too. But, um, so I grew up when I was growing up, like it was like, you know, Steely Dan, Led Zeppelin, the Eagles, all this stuff you would think I would never listen to. Right. Just looking at me. But then my mom, she's uh, she's going to turn 50 this year. So she was a lot hip and cooler. She's Colombian. So she loved like Snoop Dogg, Eminem. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm going to all rap. And um, so when I'm at home and I'm, I'm big on the music and then um, I'm super into podcasts. Like, I don't honestly, you're going to laugh. I really don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I used to watch like shows here and there, but um, I'm not a big TV guy. So if I'm at home, I'm, I'm just putting on uh, Vlad TV. Um, maybe I'll listen to some stuff for our, our podcast if we have to do some like cuts or something. Um, uh, the Breakfast Club, Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. uh, some like red pill stuff on some relationship stuff, stuff like that. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the, kind the, of the a fresh and fan. fit. Fresh and fit. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I, I do watch Fresh and Fit, but then sometimes, like, I hate to be mean and, and Stacy don't kill me, but sometimes when the girls are, like, a little bit, like, kind of bimbo-ish, like, I just, yeah. I can't take it. It becomes kind of a headache, to be honest. Mm. I'm just like, I can't. And, and here's the thing, too. Um, It's like, dude, half of those chicks that are on there, like, I will never deal with in my life because we're not in that same realm. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes it's a little unrealistic, but uh, I don't know if you remember Tom Likas back in the day. Like, I'll listen to Tom Likas. I don't know. Fresh and Fit. um, Stuff like that. Or like The Roommates. Um, But yeah, that's kind of me, man. And it's funny. You you probably would never picture it, but dude, I live kind of a, I don't want to say boring, but kind of just very like, just regiment, like kind of like, what do you call it? What's the word? Um, just like very predictable kind of lifestyle. Like I work, I work every day to start. So I actually, I work seven days a week. Wow. Uh, so I love the grind. And, um, like I said, when I do have off time, like I usually just have a couple hour gaps. So like even today at work, I worked nine to six thirty, but, um, I only had like two hour gap in between. So I'll go get lunch hang out in the pro office, like I'll just listen to podcasts on my break, catch up on a few emails, and then it's back on the grind, mm-hmm. come home, eat, shower, repeat. You know what I mean? So, um, but you know, obviously I hang out with my friends a lot. Um, we'll go out. Luckily for me, when I was 21, I kind of, I'm not gonna say wild out, but I had some good times. So sometimes when I go out now, I'm like, oh man, it's like, like I've already done this enough. Like it's kind of not my thing. And it's like, you know, too, it's like, I don't know about you guys. Like when I do drink, I see that like I'm social and chill, or it's like let's have a fucking rager. Like, let's <laughs> you know what I mean? and that's where like I'd rather save it to like hang out with like Share Bear, where it's like I'd rather work like nine months hard straight and then go spend like a couple days with him and then just like wild out. You know what I mean? So, um, 
I, I, I'm not sure if you can believe this or not, just from this experience. But the last time I party with Stacy, she was not feeling good the next morning. I, I, uh, <laughs> we came, we came out, and she was, uh, she, she was, she was not her best self there. So she, she can actually party too, believe it or not. I don't blame you, but you know what though? It's funny. Like I'm not a big beer guy, and um. I studied nutrition in school. That's what I went to school for. So I actually, I eat super clean and healthy. And I remember this was like maybe mid February. Like I hadn't had a drink, man, in probably like two, three months. And I went out with some friends and I just had three beers. I'm not a big beer guy though. And man, that next morning was rough. Like I was, mm. I was sick a little. And, um, you know, it's, it's weird. Like I said, man, it's just like, I kind of go through these phases too, where it's like, I just, sometimes I don't even care to drink, but then, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, like I'll go out have some fun. But, um, that's kind of how I look at it, man. It's either like social chill or like ranger. <laughs> There's like no in between. Yeah. That's so, pretty much the same for me too. But, uh, but yeah, man, I hope I answered that question, but, um, <laughs> literally man, like haircuts, podcasts, hanging with the dog, spending time with the fam music. Like that's kind of my life, man. It's really, it's nothing too extravagant or fancy. And, um, it's funny. Like this guy, um, this guy, Robert Kim, he's uh, he's from Korea and he's out here. I met him at a pickleball store and he was like, he wants to get me and Jesse to do a clinic in Korea. And just by looking at me, like we, we'd only spoken a few minutes. He's like, oh, like, he's like, you look a little wild and rowdy, like not like Ben Johns, very like calm and quiet. He's like, you're going to go have fun time in Korea. And I'm, just <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, it's so funny you say that, man. I'm actually like the cool, calm, like chill one. He's like, really? You know, he's like, you look, you look like fun. You look wild. And I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> bro <laughs> but uh but yeah that's that's kind of my life man I'm, I'm it's super happy and content man like i i really i live kind of a meager lifestyle for just being honest <laughs> mm-hmm. you know you know so it's a good oh sorry go stace i was gonna say with listening to all those podcasts what's your best podcast advice Ooh, that's a good question um oh man we might have, oh, I'd have to really think about this one. <laughs> there is one thing I do wish, Gabe, you, you and I were texting before. Uh, I wish yeah. Stacy and I were in the same room, you know, and uh-huh. we could have like. Yeah. You know, oh, you got to definitely do this in person, like at another yeah. time, for sure. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. The best, like, uh, podcast advice. I mean, you know, the thing is, I listen to so many, and like I said, I'm a big rap guy. So even the lyrics, like, just transcend into me and like, um, you know, I honestly, I don't know the best podcast advice off the top. I have to really think about it, but like one, I would just say, man, and this is kind of how I just, I live my life is just people talk about like politics and this and that. And honestly, like my whole thing in that is just be a good person at the end of the day and seriously, just treat people how you would want to be treated. And that's just kind of literally how I view life. So I often go and I'm guilty of this, like I'll go up and above beyond helping people out or like doing a favor for someone. Like it could be simple as like, you know, let's just say whatever you, let's say Stacy, you and I work at the same place. Like every time I go grab lunch, I'm like, Hey, you guys want anything? Or like, I might just bring you back a coffee, like just small gestures like that. I just, like I said, I believe big in karma and just seriously at the end of just being a good person. But, um, you know, may, like now I think about it, one piece of advice you just said, um, that I got from a podcast is actually, I remember like Nip, Nipsey Hustle said this, he was like, we all look at like the world, like what we can take from it. And he's like, that's, that's not like what life is about. You know what I mean? Like just getting and acquiring things. He's like, you want to leave this earth one day knowing that you like poured your heart out into mm-hmm. doing everything you did and just, um, you know, leaving like inspiration and, and that, that's how you'll be fulfilled. It's just knowing like you left a positive mark you know, and, um, I think that's, that's kind of something I would say that I've, I totally butchered that, but something to that nature. It's just, (laughs) um, like I said, man, I'm not even trying to sound cheesy, but just, just be a good person, man. Like it's really, it's not hard. And that's what kind of like ticks me off, man. Like when those keyboard warriors like start saying shit or like, even when people like, I just see at tournaments, like I'm not going to name names of pros, but like guys that like cheat on the court or like make bad line calls. It's like, Dude, it's like it just it shows me so much about your character. That's like right. I can't imagine are off the court. So mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know. I just I take notice, and like I said, I'm like a sponge. I, I see and observe everything, and I just try to be, you know, genuine and, and pure intentions with with how I live my life. So that's kind of my best advice. I know I just rambled. <laughs> no, it's great. That was you great. Know, you, you know, it's a good one. Um, do you do you watch the I Am Athlete? Oh, um, so Chad just. Chad Ochocinco and uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched it. 
I do remember, I think, I don't know if it was on his podcast. I remember he was saying how he slept in like the, what was it? The Bengal stadium. And he's mm-hmm. like, he's like, I don't need to get an apartment. I got everything I need right here. And I know he talks about how he like, he drives a smart car to this day. He's like, I already had all the Rolls Royce, the Benz. And that's something I really like though. And I'm sorry, I cut you off, but it's like, dude, that's someone who's like super fulfilled with their life and knowing that like, dude, they're happy with just being like just average or whatever even below like that's why um i brought this up on my podcast we had a guy daryl weiselman and he's one of my clients and he talked about i mean dude this guy made hundreds of millions and he talked about man like when he had the watches the cars the ferraris everything he's like he was the most miserable and that's why you see man like guys like adam sandler like jim carrey they look like bums but they don't care man they they, you come to a point in life where it's like that's not what's important you know what Mm. i mean but I remember seeing something like that on the Ocho Cinco um, podcast, and he's like, "Man, I'm just I was trying to save some money, man. I lived in the stadium. What do I need to like live in an apartment for and this and that?" <laughs> I found that cool because I'm like, "Dude, like for him to do that is awesome, but like for him to even just admit that and yeah. say it in public, it's another thing." So yeah, well, I, their whole setup is like what I wish Stacy and I had, you know, like the couches, yeah, yeah. couches. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say with the mics and yeah, yeah. The shop with like LeBron, but like obviously not in a barber shop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but... Stace, anything else you want to ask uh, Gabe before we uh, let him go? Well, Gabe, I have to say thank you so much for joining. This is the first time I've really gotten to to speak to you and get to know you, and it's been a total pleasure. So thank you so much. Of uh, course, we gotta we I... gotta. Do <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, is there anything else that we should know about Gabriel Joseph before we sign off? Well, let me ask you this. What were your first impressions? Because we've never met. So what did you think when, before I got on the pod what this was going to be like? <laughs> no, I think you, you are uh, as authentic as I see you on the live streams. Like your emotion. I, John and I talk about it all the time. We wish people were played more like you because it's entertaining and it's real yeah. and it's authentic. And I like John. I did get a chance to listen to some of your Safety Third podcasts. And I encourage everybody else to as well. They're, they're, you and Julio are uh, very good together. Um, I gotta, what's your favorite episode of the podcast that you've listened to? I listened to, I think it was one of the early ones. Um, uh, don't say red flags. Was it with Drew? <laughs> was that, or maybe he was Drew like a Bell- former. We just did that one. That was actually, we just filmed that one last Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Was that the so I got to listen to guy? Yeah. Yeah. But he's yeah, actually, yeah. he's one of the pros at my club though. So he works with me. Super okay. cool dude. That's and uh, interesting. you know, it's funny. I don't know if you, do you know the name Doug Adler the guys always at the Clippers game. Anyways, he's actually, he's, he's teaching them some pickle in their backyard in, in Malibu. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But I'm sure John was itching ass cause he's a race car guy. Didn't you want to ask about the, the, the Tessie, the Tesla? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, uh, uh, you and Riley Newman both have, uh, Teslas now. Have you guys raced <laughs> or will you guys race? Okay. In or out the car, because I'll dust them either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, man, dude, it, that thing's a, a joy. Now, I'm sure for a race car driver, I don't know how you feel about those. Maybe you want the loud performance, feel the car. But um, before I had that, I used to have a um, CLS 550 Benz. I don't know if you've mm. ever seen it on my TV, but it was pimped out, had rims. Um, it was eight uh, V8, had 5.5 liter, and it was huge. It was, it was a boat, but it was a beast. <laughs> but, I'm so glad I don't have it anymore, especially with gas prices nowadays. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, I, I I would like a Tesla or the Rivian. You know, I think those are cool. You know, the thing is the Rivians and a couple of those cars, they they definitely look cooler. But I'll, I'll tell you, this, I had a talk about this with one of my pro, one of the pros at the uh, at the club because he has one too. He has a Model Y. I think, though, the the technology of the Teslas will always be better than the other ones that come out just because it's been around longer and mm-hmm. – I think all of them kind of try to steal game from them. You know what I mean? But um, those Rivians are dope. And um, the other one was called Lucid. Lucid. A little out of my price, but super nice. <laughs> but I'll tell you, and once you get um, an electric car, like especially a Tesla, dude, you'll never go back to an engine. I'll, I'll tell you. like That I will ever. disagree with. I will have, I will have, if I have an electric car, I will have other uh, internal combustion engine cars. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You know. The thing is, I always say, man, if I was like rich or wealthy, the only car I would buy, and I, I'm sure you're a car dude, is um, I want a CL600 Benz. They don't make them anymore. It's a the two door uh, yeah. V12. I would get that as like a collectible, but that's the only car engine I would like ever consider. Um, mm. 
I always tell people like, man, when the when the cyber truck comes out, if it does, uh, that's gonna be my next Tesla. I'm gonna sell this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty but, dope. But yeah, hey man, that that ba- my backhand paid for it. That's that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> this, this pickleball two handed backhand uh, paid, paid for, for paid Tesla. for that. That yes, it did. <laughs> hey, good for you. Good for so. you. You know, I'm just driving my little Miatas around, so uh, you would smoke me in my little girl Miata. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what the year has in store, and you know, I'm definitely looking looking to take on. I mean, if someone wants to play some doubles or mixed doubles, I'm I'm open to partners. But uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens, and hopefully, I run into you guys on tour. That'd be that'd be dope. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, are you going to New York? Um, I looked at it. I I'm considering it. The thing is, is like I said, man, I. I'm so guilty of this and I'm surprised you guys didn't ask me this about like the practicing and all that. Um, I'm usually in and out one day, like for the tournaments, like even in Mesa, I was literally only there for like 16, 18 hours. And it's funny. It was a bad, bad thing, but a good thing at the same time. Like I had booked my flight for, to go home and Mesa at like three o'clock. And luckily I had Southwest. I had to rebook it like two times because I was in the bronze medal Mm-hmm. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know. Cause I know if I, if I do go, I'll have to take some time off of work. Cause if I'm going to go to New York, I'm not just going to go for two days, yeah. you know? So, um, we'll see. I'm definitely considering going. It's, um, just kind of have to feel it out and, um, and see how situations work out. But, uh, I would love to. <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely have to see it at tournament soon. And whenever I'm out in, uh, or Stacy's out in, uh, LA, we we'll are have to hop on the safety third podcast. For sure. You, you, you guys will get the invite. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> but uh where where in florida are you guys i'm in jacksonville beach and she's in uh west palm okay so you're closer to like orlando right where it's like two hours away yeah okay yeah. and and west palm beach so what, you're closer to what miami yeah about an hour north of miami gotcha so it's funny fun fact my uh my dad was was a practicing attorney what, what kind of law do you do I do corporate. So I be, I say any business issue, buying, selling companies, but really any, any issue as a business owner. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. My dad did uh, workers comp, but that's okay. super. Yeah. yeah, yeah when you were, funny. I was, was going to say, oh, when you were talking about your jury, you've been in court more days than I have. I know, by the way, did I like, <laughs> like self-incriminate myself? Cause I know I'm not supposed to talk about the case, but oh, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was, it's actually cool, though, because when, when my dad did workers' comp, he actually used to take me uh, to the courthouses with him, and then it's oh, funny, cool. full-fledged. There's a courthouse in, like, Marina Del Rey, which is, like, 10 minutes from Venice. So he used to take me to court with him, and then we would go play paddle tennis right after. Oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> but, that's uh, cool. but yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, it's funny. I, one of my things, if, if I make enough money, I think I would actually want to go to law school in maybe, like, a couple years and, and do do legal stuff but i don't know we'll see that's kind of a little pipe dream <laughs> hey, hey it's always good to have a dream you know for sure well gabe um it's been a pleasure uh we i don't know if you have a cup near you have the water bottle we always we, we always go out on a signature way we always cheers the camera <laughs> um so you if know you what? don't I think before we cheers yeah. like i you guys asked me two goals though i want to happen with pickleball if it gets big enough one I want to play in the celebrity NBA All Star game. And <laughs> hope I get famous enough because my celebrity crush, Dua Lipa, I, I need to make that happen. So, <laughs> need to holler at me. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We 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 will. We'll tag her in the uh, in, in the Instagram post for you. Oh man, Dude, I, I rarely like what do you call it? Like fan fanboy or whatever. But man, Dua Lipa, she she's got my heart. <laughs> All right. Well, then, how about this? We'll make the cheers to Dua Lipa. All right, cheers. so we'll cheers the camera. Pickler out to Dua Lipa. Pickler out, baby. <laughs>